Welcome, welcome. We are live from Data Cloud USA here in fabulous Austin, Texas at the Four Seasons Resort. And this is our first interview to kick off Data Cloud USA, uh, where we are covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and joining me today is Paul Vasilopoulos of Bank Street Group. Paul, welcome. Buffy, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you today. Uh, so let's dive right in. How would you describe the current landscape of M&A activity in digital infrastructure, and where do you see the market heading in 2024 and beyond? Great. Thanks, Buffy. Great question and a, a good lead into my uh, presentation tomorrow at 930. I'll be doing on the M&A environment in data centers. But the environment has been uh, very strong, remains, remains strong. Uh, I think we saw a peak in 2021, particularly in data centers. Mm -hmm. um, 2022, also a very robust year. I think we're, we'll be down in, in terms of volume of deals and in uh, total number of deals and deal volume this year. But still very strong, uh, still very strong year. I think you've seen some some blockbusters announced already, like the Compass deal. Right. For instance, you've seen uh, Mubadala invest in Aligned Energy, a uh, uh, big deal. And, and even in the press last week, um, talking about Morgan Stanley Infrastructure Partners maybe acquiring assets uh, in Europe. So it still remains a, uh, a robust environment, albeit down slightly from uh, our peak in 2021. But multiples multiples are strong, and uh, and deal volumes are strong. So we see that continuing. Hopefully, Knockwood over the next uh, year or two. So, well, what regions in the world are you seeing the most activity, and where do you see the next big region focus uh, for this for the space? For the space, yeah. And look, it's it's been busy uh, around the world. Frankly, I mean, we've been focused on the North American environment. And there have been uh, a number of big deals, uh, a number of mid-sized deals across the board uh, in data centers in, in the U.S., in Canada. But we see that around the world. I'd say two particular areas of focus, certainly Europe, quite a bit right. going on in Europe. Again, whether that's um, you know data centers, independent data center providers for sale or data centers being carved out of telcos, for instance, uh, we've seen it um, across the board, whether it's whether it's edge compute or hyperscale interconnection, um, co-location, hybrid IT across that stack in the U.S. and Europe. And and Latin America has been a very strong environment for us at Bank Street. We've done a number of uh, very large, uh, you know, multi-billion dollar deals in Latin America. We have uh, some deals in the works right now there as well. So, you know, places like Brazil, Mexico, right. Chile, Colombia. Uh, but but it's around the world. Asia's very uh, very attractive market. A number of deals. Africa's starting to to get a lot of attention as well. Some new investments in places uh, places like Lagos, Nigeria, for instance. So um, you know we we see this demand this this demand for compute, uh, demand for broadband transport. Certainly, uh, the need for data centers is a is a global a global need. Yeah, it definitely is a global need, and we're hearing about these regions uh, over and over again pop up, even in Greece and Italy. Imagine and, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so tell me a little bit more about some of the growth strategies uh, for the next wave of investment in digital infrastructure. The growth strategies of the, the players in the environment. Yes. Yeah, you know, focused on, on data centers because that's, you know, why we're here. Um, you know, the demand set has been very strong. Mm -hmm. The absorption rates in terms of megawatts have been, been very large. I was uh, reading on the plane on the way out here a C CBRE report in terms of the uh, number of uh, megawatts deployed just in the second quarter was at an all time high. Um, so, so you know, the growth drivers are clearly still there. Um, I think the newest growth driver we're seeing is AI. I guess it's the talk of uh, of everybody how many times have you heard it so far <laughs> yeah. at this conference yeah it's exactly you, yeah. you we're surrounded by it um uh you know suddenly uh, everyone's talking about nvidia and what they're doing and right. how ai is is driving growth and and you have uh you know people in the industry predicting this is a you know multi-gigawatt need uh multi-gigawatt demand set so you know the growth the basic growth drivers are there um 
I mentioned edge, the, the push to the edge to compute um, is there to tier two and tier three cities around the world. But the top, you know, seven or 10 markets in the U.S. still see strong demand um, just in cloud and hybrid IT, co-location, mm -hmm. managed services. So um, across the board, those same demand drivers are still there leading to really record record deployments of power and record vacancy rates in some of the top markets. So, Is there anything that you'd like to add today, Paul? Yes. Well, uh, show up to my presentation tomorrow at 930. If I haven't plugged that already, I will tomorrow plug it. Tomorrow at 930. Tuesday at 930. We'll go into uh, more detail. We'll have some slides and we'll talk about some of the blockbuster deals that are happened, um, that have been happening, some of the activity that we've been involved with uh, through the mid-cap space and, and some of the larger deals as well. And it's It'll be a fascinating speech followed by a panel discussing some of the some of the growth drivers behind this. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Buffy. And thanks again for joining us today. And to our viewers, thanks for joining us. Stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking.